Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Dick Tracy, brought to us by Sega. Dick Tracy, of course, is based on the 1990 film of the same name, and happens to be one of my absolute favorite film adaptations for the Sega Genesis. The game has a couple of decent songs in its soundtrack, though there's not enough music overall, but it's the core gameplay that ended up drawing me in and made me play the game for hours upon hours upon hours. The game is broken up into six different levels, and each level is broken up into three different parts, with the third part being where you face off against one of the various gang members, and eventually against Big Boy himself at the end of the game. As we begin the game, we're in the first kind of action stage. There's three different styles of levels throughout the game, and they mix them up for the different stages. You have these ones where you have the foreground that you'll be facing off against enemies, and then you have to worry about the background, where you hit the C button to pull out a Tommy gun in order to fire at all the enemies in the background. This added element of gameplay is what really ended up setting Dick Tracy apart. You also have driving levels, where you have to keep alive for a certain amount of time while firing at the enemies that are coming your way in the various vehicles. And then you also have levels where it's just the front part of what this level is, so it's just the to the action platforming, you don't have to worry about enemies coming at you from the background. For the most part, the gameplay is pretty simplistic. Just get from one side of the screen to the other, or survive for a certain amount of time if you're doing the driving levels. The only levels where this goal really changes up is in the boss encounters, where the level ends when you're able to drain all the boss's health. The difficulty in the game, and there are multiple difficulties if you want to take them on, is what ended up making the game difficult for me to finish, not only as a kid, but took me a long time in order to finally get this video done, especially the later levels in the game where it's very easy to die in just a couple of hits. Level number two is one of those stages where we don't have to worry about the background. We're also, though, out of bullets during this particular stage, so we're unable to fire at the enemies. One thing you'll have to get good at during the course of Dick Tracy is being able to either jump over bullets or duck under bullets, and then during the opportunities where enemies are reloading, you'll be able to stand up and quickly gain ground on them in order to take them out. You have things to worry about, like explosions that will come your way, dynamite that will hit the ground and then blow up a few moments later. Here we're able to climb on top of this train, we're going to wait for the fire to stop, and try to get over to the right side in order to take out this enemy. Unfortunately though, getting caught in the crossfire here, it's a bit difficult for me to get over there. Once that enemy is taken out on the top though, I'm able to continue along the top portion of the train that's located in this level. Not all the time, but a few times you'll have the screen stop due to a certain enemy that you'll have to take out in order to get the screen to start to scroll again. This is a good opportunity, though, to get used to the physics of Dick Tracy. He doesn't move particularly fast, and you're unable to speed up, so you have to kind of get used to the movements of him being able to easily dodge out of the way of most of the enemy attacks. A lot of times, the strategy will be to just keep on moving, because the farther the screen scrolls, the closer you're getting to the end. Here we go, though, with the first boss encounter of the game, and the bosses, for the most part, are very similar. Just a few elements will change up in their particular approach to being able to try to take you out. The first of these gang members we're taking out is Itchy. You'll see him in the background, and after attacking him, he'll flash with invulnerability for a few moments before we'll be able to attack him again. This usually leads him to running off-screen and then respawning at another spot. He may pop out of a door, he may pop out of a window, or come from either the left or right side, so you always have to be paying attention during these boss encounters to see when the enemy pops out so that you're able to deliver a hit and keep the screen scrolling. After a few seconds of invulnerability, he will be able to get attacked again, and Sometimes you can double or triple attack him before he's able to get off screen and respawn himself at another location. 
during these fights, you'll have a lot of times where the screen will stop scrolling, and you basically just have to take out the other enemies, as well as the barrage of attacks of whatever boss you're currently dealing with. Itchy, of course, is the easiest of the bosses we're going to have to be dealing with during the course of the game, so once again, kind of decent practice for what things are going to end up coming our way farther in. After this last big shootout, we're finally able to bring down Itchy's health, and we're moving on to stage number two. In between the stages, you do a bonus game, where A, B, and C on the Genesis controller represent you firing at one of the three different standees in the background. Your goal is to, of course, take out the enemies and not shoot the innocent people, which sometimes is a bit confusing due to the colors of the suits and outfits and the like. Very easy to kind of get a perfect early on, but the farther ones are, of course, much faster and more difficult in order to do it. If you're able, though, to pull off a perfect during the bonus game, you will end up netting yourself some extra credits and points at the bottom of the screen. You can see which ones you have gotten. Stage 2A begins us inside of a warehouse, and this is one of those ones where we have the background and the foreground to deal with, and thankfully we have ammo in our gun for the stage. Introduced here are the knife-wielding enemies. These guys are pretty fast. They're going to try to run in, jump, or stab you if they're able to get close enough to you. Thankfully, our bullets are able to easily kind of get to them. Sometimes they'll do a jump, and when they do that jump, they'll usually go over your head, and this will allow you to attack them when they're in front of you when they land in order to deliver that hit with a bullet. Sometimes it can be difficult with like boxes and other stuff in the background to be able to actually see the enemies that are in that background, so you always want to keep a sharp eye, especially when they end up stopping to start firing. What's really cool is they don't instantly hit you when they fire, they have that machine gun-like bullets that go across the front of the screen, so you can tell if they're actually getting close to you with those bullets, so you're able to either jump over the attacks or be able to attack them. During this segment here, we have a lot of boxes to kind of jump over, and these knife guys are pretty relentless at first, trying to, like, run up to us and stab us, even from boxes below us. But eventually, they'll kind of give up and run away, and we're able to make it to the end of the level. Now, 2B is the first of the driving sequences. Now, during these segments, you're able to fire straight left and right, similar to the other main action levels, as well as being able to use that machine gun-like fire into the background. Enemies will keep coming at you from cars in the foreground that will fire out. They'll either pop out of the car window or open up the door and attack you that way. As well as, of course, in the background, they'll be doing very much the same thing. So it's just a matter of keeping up with everyone that's trying to attack you. It's a much easier level for the most part than some of the other action levels because at least you don't have to worry about movement and keeping the screen going. You just have to focus on staying alive for the entire length of the level and it tells you at the top of the screen with that little gauge on how close you are to being able to make it to the end of the stage. Like many growing up in the 90s, the first time I had even heard of Dick Tracy was through the 1990 movie, but then years later I watched a lot of the old serials and read some of the old comics, and I've always enjoyed it for what it is, the detective work, but more importantly, like, the villains, just crazy, weird villains like Pruneface, for example. And I absolutely adored growing up the Daffy Duck cartoon that parodied Dick Tracy, where he just goes over the cavalcade of really crazy and weird villains. It's just one of those cartoons that has stood out in my mind for many, many years later.
The only issue with some of these levels is that there isn't a ton of strategy other than the timing of being able to keep up and firing at the enemies as much as you're able to. Once we finish up there, the car will come to a stop and we're moving on to the next boss battle. As we begin the battle against the Brow, we're on the streets here, he throws dynamite, a lot of dynamite, but the good thing is you're able to jump over the dynamite very easily. You can see it kind of arcing in and be able to jump over it. The dynamite that's a little bit more troublesome is the ones that go up and hit the gurneys above you, which will cause them to break and end up falling down, so you, you want to make sure that you stay away from them so that you don't end up getting squashed and lose some health during that. Sometimes you'll be able to throw out multiple dynamite sticks in a row, so you'll have to be ready to jump over a few of them. And there's, of course, other normal thug enemies that you have to deal with as well during this fight. During this segment, he usually starts off always on the left side, so I'm prepared to be able to keep firing that machine gun on that left side as he runs across. Usually able to get a couple of hits in before the screen scrolls again. The Brow actually gives you, I think, more time to actually attack him, at least more so than Itchy, so the battle doesn't last too long before he's ended up being defeated, and we're moving on to stage number three. We get to do, of course, the bonus game once again, and it gets a little bit harder. You have a little bit less time to kind of think about things before you end up firing off your gun, so try to do your best to pay attention to take out the guys so you can get some extra bonus point and potentially some extra credits. As we begin level 3-A, this is another one of the street levels. Uh, we have a few tougher, faster shooting enemies, but for the most part, it's pretty much similar to the ones we've already done up to this point. Basically, you now have the guys in the tan suits, and they fire a little bit more sporadically, a little bit faster when they end up appearing on screen, so you have to be paying a little bit more attention. Other than that, most of the level is pretty much the same as far as the action is concerned. You have a whole bunch of enemies pop out of the doors here, so be ready to fire out that machine gun like fire. You also have these bigger fat guys that are wearing red suits, and they have machine guns that unload a few bullets at a time when they end up rolling up onto the screen. So be ready for them and be able to duck under their fire. Near the end of the level here, we have a few of the blue suits to try to gang up on us, and one of those red suit fat guys, before we end up hitting the end of the stage and move on to 3B. Three B is another one of the driving style of levels. So, basically, everything you did in the previous one just a little bit tougher because I guess there's a few more enemies and maybe they fire a little bit more quickly 
towards you, but for the most part, it's still a pretty simplistic style of level. Cars in front, cars in the background, just gotta make sure you're ready on the fire button in order to take them all down appropriately. While this is by far my favorite version of the Dick Tracy games, I do feel the Sega Master System version is also pretty well done. It's done in a very similar way to this one. And even though it has a lot of flaws, the NES version is actually not as bad as its reputation as far as some of the gameplay elements that it has. It just requires a bit of a learning curve for sure as far as being able to get through it. After battling and destroying quite a lot of the gangsters throughout the course of the level, we finally end up making it to the end here and moving on to 3C in the next boss encounter. For this fight, we're fighting inside of a restaurant against Lips. Now, Lips is in the background. He doesn't throw dynamite, thankfully, but we have a lot of other thugs that we have to deal with throughout the course of the level. You'll notice immediately the green suited knife guys, which I guess are a little bit faster than the other knife guys we've been dealing with throughout the course of the level. But for the most part, it's a relatively straightforward boss. A little bit easier, I think, in some ways than the brow, just because you don't have to worry about the dynamite as much. Especially if you have a quick trigger finger, that way you're able to hit lips before he's able to really get off too many of the shots towards you. When we come to a stop here, you just have to dodge a few of his shots, ducking under most of the bullets that he ends up dishing out. Right after this though, the fight gets a little bit tougher as you make it to a bar in the background where he'll actually start throwing out some Molotov cocktails towards you that cause little flames to end up appearing on the ground. This is the more challenging aspect of this fight, but still ends up being relatively easy in order to contend with. Every time he pops out, we'll be able to deliver a hit and we can kind of jump over the flames. Try to stay somewhat in the center, that way you have a little bit more space to deal with, but you'll also be able to keep hitting him every time he ends up popping up, and once he's done, we're moving on to the fourth stage. Stage 4A, halfway through the game now, is the next level that has no bullets, so we have to be careful and just punch our enemies, as they have plenty of firepower in order to try to take us out. One of the knife enemies tries to chase me for a decent amount of time. You'll also have the blue suited guys who can duck all the way down to the very ground itself, crawling and being able to try to fire at your legs, so you have to be wary of them while going through. This level is more difficult because of the more rabbit fire rate and a few more types of the enemies that are coming your way during it. For example here, a few enemies were chasing me for a while, but I can't outrun them forever. I need to turn around and take them out. 
The knife guy, though, on the other hand, just loves to keep jumping over me and will not stop trying to stab me until eventually I give him a nice little punch to the face. Unfortunately, this is a pretty bland looking level overall, even with the different colored buildings going on in the background. It's still just kind of a okay stage to kind of make your way through. Near the end of it, though, you do have these tire throwing guys. I want to make sure no other enemies are kind of like right near me before dealing with them. As you do get close, he will throw that tire at you before you make it to the very end of the level. So be ready for that. And as long as you have at least a little bit of health left, you'll be able to take the hit from the tire and still finish up the stage. Four B is another one of the dual street levels here, so we get back our weaponry and we're able to fire at all the enemies coming up in the background. Another element of the game that can be a little bit frustrating is the time limit in stages. You can see it in the lower right corner, and in levels like this, especially ones farther into the game, you have to make sure you keep moving throughout the levels, and sometimes it can be a little bit difficult just due to the amount of enemies that are coming your way, and you have to stop and fire the machine gun every few moments in order to make sure you don't end up getting attacked and killed yourself. You'll also notice as we make it farther in that enemies get a little bit faster, you'll have more groups of them at one time to deal with. You have like the black coat guys in the background that move a little bit faster as far as their firing rate is concerned. A few guys that will also be throwing out some dynamite towards us as we're trying to make our way through these stages. Anytime you see a big group of enemies kind of drop in from the background or appear out of the background, that's a good opportunity to stand for just a few moments in order to take them out and then move on in the stage. After dealing with just a couple more guys in the background, though, finally, though, we make it to the end of the level and moving on to 4C, the next boss encounter. Pruneface is definitely one of my favorites, just a very unique looking character overall and made a big impression on me as a kid as far as the makeup and all was concerned in the original movie. For this battle though, Pruneface loves to use grenades, so he fires out a constant stream of grenades when he's on screen trying to explode you, and he comes out of both the top and bottom part of this warehouse as we're traveling through it. Sometimes it's easy to be able to just stand still and wait for the grenades to kind of pass you depending upon where their trajectory is set to the go, but other times you will have to make sure that you're able to jump out of the way quickly of those grenades as they're coming your way. Like we have in the other battles, eventually you'll come to a small stopping spot where you'll have ample opportunity to deliver a couple of hits to prune face. Standing over here to the right, we only have to jump over one of the grenades he's about to throw out as he does a constant stream of them. Since he fires them out from the far left to the right side, you have ample opportunity to be able to kind of get out of the way of the grenades as he is throwing them. This segment right here takes a little bit for him to actually start moving again, so you're able to get quite a few hits in without having to worry too much about actually being hit by any of his projectiles. Once he is low on health here, we'll continue on just a little bit farther on before another screen stop, and it's pretty much identical to the one before, where he's just going to throw those grenades from the left to the right side, and we're easily able to dodge out of the way and jump over some of the explosions.
During this segment here though, we're finally able to finish off Pruneface and we're moving on to 5-A. Five dash A is a little bit of a different stage here. We're walking on these gurneys on the top part of the level, and we want to make sure that we don't accidentally fall into any of the gaps that are created. Sometimes the screen will stop, and we'll have to take out a big group of enemies that are in the background of this area. Not a whole lot of extra jumping or space for us to really deal with as far as the enemies that are coming our way, but we still have to be a little bit cautious of a few spots in particular when we have to make a couple of platforming jumps. Here's one of those times where we have to make one of those jumps over those gaps as we continue on through the level here. It's not a particularly long stage. We're able to make a decent amount of progress through it since we don't have to stop too often. The biggest threat to us though is falling into the pits. The jump for Dick Tracy is not very good. And because he moves relatively slowly while jumping, it can be hard to make a couple of these particular jumps. After a decent series of jumps from these green platforms, eventually we make it back onto the gurney where we're able to finish at the level and move on to 5B. Five B is another one of the driving levels, and this is the most difficult one we've dealt with yet. You have three cars right off the bat that we're going to have to deal with with a series of enemies in each one of the cars as we're trying to progress through this level. Still, for the most part, I do enjoy these stages as a nice change of pace, and overall, they're not as difficult as a lot of the other action-based levels, since you basically just have the enemies coming your way, and you don't have to worry about making any sort of movement other than getting on top of the roof of the car or ducking down on the car in order to dodge different bullets. There isn't a whole lot new in this driving level compared to some of the other ones that we've been dealing with. Just basically more enemies coming at you at one time than in some of the other ones we've already dealt with.
After a pretty long, exhausting ride, we finally come to the end, and we're moving on to the next boss encounter. The next boss encounter is against Flattop, who uses a machine gun for us to have to dodge a lot of during this fight. The way he does it, though, is he fires kind of like one direction, and he'll quickly turn it around and fire the opposite direction, so you need to make sure that you're ducking quickly and stay ducked in order to get away from a lot of the bullets as he's firing them out. He also has a fair amount of health. He'll take a lot of shots before you're finally able to bring him down during the course of this fight. Not too far into the battle, though, we will come to the first stop here, which is a couple of tables that we'll be able to kind of, like, duck under the table to guess to protect us, technically, as we're making sure we're able to deliver a couple of shots to flat top during this. He moves very fast, though, between the left and right side of the screen, and sometimes he will fire at the ground level, so you have to make sure you're ready to jump over the bullets as he's doing this. He'll fire all the way one direction and then turn around and start firing the opposite, so you'll have to jump twice during some of these attacks. This is a large part of the fight against him though, he likes to stay pretty much in this location for a large portion of the battle, and as you can see we've drained quite a lot of his health and have done minimal dodging, we didn't really have to move, just duck and be sure to jump every once in a while. Then on the next part though, this is where things get a little bit more difficult. The lights go out and Flattop will continue to battle you during the lights being out, and as he fires, that's when the lights come on so you can kind of tell where he is. But you have to be very quick and diligent in order to deliver a hit to him before he's able to deliver a shot to you, so you have to be very, very fast. And even at my best, I still end up making mistakes and get hit a couple of times during the course of these battles. After a lengthy and the most difficult boss battle we've had yet, we're taking care of Flat Top and we're moving on to the sixth and final set of levels in Dick Tracy on Genesis. Six dash A is another one of the levels where we don't have any bullets. It's a sewer level, and it's easily the hardest stage in the entire game. This level alone is the reason why I hadn't done a video on Sega Genesis Dick Tracy for quite a long time, because trying to get through it is a nightmare without losing at least a life or two trying to best it. Over here to the right, we climb up these ladders in order to take out this guy in a tan suit, and this will allow us to be able to continue scrolling the screen, though when we come back down, enemies have ganged up at the bottom of the one ladder, making it really difficult for us to continue on in this level. Everything during the stage is very precise as far as being able to take out the enemies and do a lot of jumping and ducking under certain amounts of bullets. We have the big fat guys that are in this level as well, the big blue suit fat guys that will have to duck under their fire and quickly get to them before they're able to deliver hits. Here we have a dynamite guy and a low firing guy, and because of this it can be difficult to actually get close enough in order to deliver a punch or two. When I make it here, I climb up the ladder and move to the left. And the reason why I do this is so that this dynamite throwing guy will go to the left side. After I climb the ladder, he decides that I guess he couldn't hit me, so he moves, and that alone allows me to get past. Without that, it would be really hard to actually hit him without accidentally getting hit with one of those dynamite sticks as well.
The only thing good is the level isn't extremely long, it's just so difficult due to the types of enemies you're dealing with. So even if you're down to your one hit left, you still have a good chance of being able to just barely persevere and survive throughout the rest of it, like I was able to during this run. But this level, just an absolute nightmare most of the time in order to actually make it all the way through. Six B now has us out at the dock, and it's another level where we actually have our bullets back, as well as, of course, we have to deal with the enemies in the background. This level does dish out a lot, and I mean a lot of enemies towards us, consistently firing our way. The good thing is, though, since you do have the gun, at least you have a far away projectile you can deliver in order to hit the enemies that are a decent away away from you and because of this at least this level is a bit easier because of it even though there is more enemies in this stage than 6a because of the gun it's a lot easier to deal with Throughout this level though, you do have to worry a little bit about a couple of gaps in the pathway that you're able to walk. There's a few spots where you will need the platform a bit. I also do actually like the water effect that's going on throughout this level. At least it looks nice as far as the Sega Genesis game is concerned. A little bit ways into the level, you'll come to this series of crates, and as soon as you get about halfway through, a whole bunch of knife guys spawn, so try to deal with all of them the best you can before continuing on in the level. Over here, duck behind this crate, and this will give you a good opportunity to take out a lot of the enemies behind you and in front of you, as well as the ones in the background. As soon as you pass this set of crates though, a whole swarm of knife guys are going to come your way, so be ready to pound on the attack button in order to take them all out. Not far after that though, another group of enemies will spawn right from the background for you to be ready to take out with your Tommy gun. After a whole ton of enemies, eventually we finally make it to the end of the level and we're moving on to the final boss of the game. Now it's us against Big Boy and here we're in this giant warehouse like setting and it's pretty dark so it's a little bit difficult to see some of the enemies throughout the course of this level. The boss encounter itself is very similar to a lot of the ones we've already been dealing with, except Big Boy likes to appear for only a second or two sometimes before he ends up disappearing, so you have to be really quick on the draw in order to hit him in certain moments at least. Throughout this fight though, you will have giant gears come raining down from the sky, and you'll have to make sure you're able to watch out for them as they fall down. Big Boy will keep spawning these to fall down from the sky. You can kind of see him snapping his finger in the air in order for them to drop on down. So just kind of watch out for them and keep firing at him every time he ends up re-popping back up. A little bit into the level itself, you'll end up making it into a giant set of boxes where you'll be able to hit Big Boy a couple of times as he's summoning the gears. Right after that though is another big showdown against him. He'll keep summoning them and every so often he'll disappear and then end up respawning in one of the spots in there in the doors or from the left or right side of the screen and end up firing in your direction. Being that this is the final boss of the game, he does respawn and move around pretty quickly, and it doesn't take long for him to either 
send another gear your way, or fire out his gun. The gun is more deadly, I think, because a lot of times the gears will just kind of go over your head. Very, very rarely do they end up landing directly on wherever you're standing. During this last segment, it will take a long time in order to slowly drain his health. He'll send every single one of the gears your direction over the course of the battle. But once you deliver the final hit, you can sit back and enjoy the ending to Dick Tracy on the Sega Genesis. So, there you have it. That's all you really get for the ending, unfortunately. And Dick Tracy, though, after all these years, is still one of my absolute favorite movie adaptations on the Sega Genesis. But with that, guys, it's going to wrap up this episode of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.